Hi, this is Claire from Berry Do Papery, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these two cards using Gunsai Tombi watercolors and using a United We Flourish collaboration stamp set from Ellen Hudson and Hero Arts called Better Together. So when you get the Better Together stamp and die set, they come in this handy dandy clear envelope, and the dies are kind of sneakily hidden in the middle, and they come with a magnetic uh, sheet so you can uh, keep all your dies together that way. So for these cards, I'm just going to uh, plot out where I want the stamps to go. I kind of already had an idea. I cheated, but um, <laughs> I figured I'd show it on camera too. So um, that's where I want, you know, I got the birds in their, their branch or their fence um, where I want them to be sitting. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the fence in Hero Arts Black Ink, and I'm also going to stamp the branch in the same black ink. Um, the reason why I'm using the Hero Arts ink in particular um, is because it works really well with watercoloring, which is what we're going to do, and it also doesn't take very long to dry at all. And I don't really want to wait um, because I'm going to be masking these off using the Molotow masking liquid. So um, if this was, say, VersaFine, then I would heat set this before I went in with the masking liquid because that liquid, um, I mean, it is liquid, so it might uh, smush some of the VersaFine ink around because the VersaFine ink is pigment ink, so it takes a while to dry. So just keep that in mind when you're using the uh, this masking fluid. So um, this is the Molotow masking marker, and this is the first time I've used it in a year. Um, and the first couple times I was using it, I would just uh, write something down or mask something off real quick, and then I'd immediately go in with my water and then after I finish with my water, I would heat set it and then I'd start rubbing the masking fluid off and then it didn't work very well. <laughs> I was like, this stuff does, does, not, does not work. And so I posted about it on Instagram and someone was like, uh, well, you have to kind of let the, the masking liquid dry. So <laughs> that's something to know. Um, other people might actually read instructions and you already knew that, but if you're like me and just kind of go straight into things <laughs> without reading directions, then there's that. This uh, liquid, you do want to give it some time to dry. It doesn't take that long, maybe five minutes. So while I'm going to give that time to dry and then heat, stamp these uh, birds in Versamark on some black cardstock and then heat emboss them in white and then die cut them using the coordinating dies. It doesn't take that long and by the time that's all done, the liquid is all dry and you're ready to start watercoloring. So the watercolors that I'm using today are uh, Gansai Tambi. It's Japanese and I don't know any Japanese, so I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I pronounce a lot of English wrong too, so we're just going to have to go with it. Um, so uh, these inks are really, I, they're not like the highest quality inks, but they're convenient. and. I'm not some professional watercolorist, so they work for me. Um, it's really handy being able to just kind of pull them out when you want to. So the colors that I'm using today are this red, this aqua, kind of muddy orange, earthy orange, and then kind of an indigo. I don't know if they have names. I know they have numbers, which I'll list on the blog. Um, so I just want to really quickly talk about some of the techniques I'm kind of using today. So I'm not some like expert watercolorist, but I know a couple little things. Um, and the technique I want to use today is, I think it's called water on water, where um, you, let's say you paint one part of your canvas or whatever you're using, you paint it with the water, and then before that dries, you come in with, let's say a different color, and you paint real close to it, and then you kind of let that color bleed into the other color that's still wet. So that's water on water. Um, there's also water on dry, which is um, you might paint something, let it dry, and then go in with the second layer. When you go in with the second layer, it's not going to bleed onto that first layer because it already dried. I think the only way it might the first layer might bleed is if you have a ton of pigments like still sitting on it. Um, so what I want to do is I kind of want my colors to kind of bleed and mesh together um, for these two cards. So I'm mostly going to be doing water on water, um, but sometimes 
for a couple of my little blobs, I'm going to be doing water on dry. Um, so that's the, the name for it. Um, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't thinking, oh, well, here I'm going to do water on water. Here I'm going to do water on dry. It just kind of happened, and I thought I'd let you know what, what the actual name was for it. I think that's the actual name. So, um, and again, another really quick watercoloring um, know-how, I guess, is uh, the way a watercolor is going to appear um, it will depend on how much water you have and how much pigment you have. It can also depend on other things like the kind of cardstock you're using. I'm using Bristol cardstock, which is acceptable for water. Um, you can't do a whole lot of watercolor on it because then the paper will start peeling and it'll get super warped. Um, but I'm not doing a whole lot of watercoloring today, so the Bristol paper is fine. Usually I'd use watercolor paper, but I just decided to use Bristol today. But anyway, um, the colors will vary depending on how much water and how much pigment you pick up. So um, if you have a lot of water on your brush and you pick up just a little bit of pigment, you're going to have a very kind of watered down, washed out version of that color. Versus if you have, you know, a little bit of water on your brush um, and then you pick up a lot of pigment, it's going to show up very vibrant. Um, I think you could have a lot of water on your brush and pick up a lot of pigment um, and it will still show up very bright. But that's just one of the things with watercoloring. Um, you just kind of play around with how much water is on your brush and how much pigment you're picking up. Um, there's a lot of variables in watercoloring, which I know scares a lot of people, but I like because it means there's no, there's no really right way to do things. It just depends on what look you're going for. Um, so for me, that means I don't have to really know that much <laughs> and I can just play around and um, I can get some really fun looks. I'm not planning on the look a lot of time. I'm not, not super intentional, but I don't know, it's still fun. So I, that's just how I roll with watercolors. Um, if you wanted to be really precise with them, there's lots of other YouTube videos for that. <laughs> so um, while my watercolors are um, drying, I am going to go ahead and stamp this Hero Arts Candy Stripe Bold Prints background using Versafine ink on some scrap cardstock. The reason I'm using Versafine here and not Hero Arts, which Hero Arts is usually my go-to ink because um, it works really well with watercoloring um, and zigs, which is my primary color medium. And it is not pigment ink, so it dries really quickly. Versafine is a very beautiful black, but it's pigment ink and it takes a while to dry and it's just messier than Hero Arts ink. So um, I'm usually kind of moving quickly. I don't have to worry about smudging any ink or getting it on my fingers and putting it somewhere else. But um, the reason I'm using Versafine for this is because of the specific black you get from Versafine. So the candy stripe bold prints, there's some really thick stripes there. And if you don't get a perfect really crisp impression um, with this stamp if you're using if you're doing it on black it's going to be pretty obvious which could be a look that you want to go for but I want my stripes to be really crisp and black I mean if I was doing this in blue or green I wouldn't it wouldn't matter to me as much if it wasn't perfectly crisp um, it's not the stamps fault it's just like you know getting even pressure and everything um, so so I don't have to worry about stamping a ton of cardstock to just get that exact perfect crisp impression. I'm using the Versafine and then I'm coloring in those black stripes with my Micron pen. I knew beforehand that my Micron pen black matches the Versafine really well. If I stamped it in Hero Arts, I know that the my Micron pen, you can tell where I colored it in. The blacks are not the same. Um, this is something that I learned um, I don't know, fifth or sixth grade, but like all inks, like you might get, it's maybe the same color from two different manufacturers, um, same black, or it's usually the darker colors like navy. They're all made up of different colors, so different manufacturers, or manufacturers will have different compositions for those colors. And you'll see that most obviously with black. Um, different, you know, just different brands, just in the inks themselves, like uh, 
Hero Arts, Versafine, wherever you're getting your black inks. Um, some of them are pretty similar. They might be made by the same manufacturer, but a lot of them kind of have their own special qualities. Like some of them you can't use with water, some of them you can. Um, like Versafine's pigment, Hero Arts isn't. So the black themselves, the black colors themselves are made up of so many different colors, and so um, I knew that the, the Micron Pen Black was not the same as the Hero Arts Black. The Micron Pen Black worked really well with the Versafine. I don't know if it's the same. Um, it might not be the same like color makeup, but the blacks work well together. You can't tell that I colored in with this Micron Pen. So just play around with whatever black pens you have and whatever uh, black ink you have to get the correct match. I guess that's the long and short of that whole ramble. <laughs> um, so now that my panels are dry, I rubbed off the masking uh, fluid, liquid, whatever it is. And you can use your fingers. I just didn't want to because I was just using Versafine ink and I didn't wash my hands. So I didn't want to accidentally smudge the teeniest bit of black somewhere. So I used um, just an eraser to kind of peel everything back and that works super, super well. So um, I just peeled that off real quick using the eraser and now I'm stamping the sentiments and we're going to, I'm going to do this first, the two little bird card first. So I trimmed the panel down and I'm going to adhere a strip of that cardstock that I had stamped. Um, another <laughs> FYI is I heat set this panel before I even cut it down to size because it's versifying ink. It's pigment and it can be messy. So I didn't, like I didn't wait for it to heat dry because that would have taken a while. I heat set it to make sure that none of that black ink would try getting itself anywhere that I didn't want it to be. So I just adhered that strip down and then I'm going to adhere the uh, bird panel, but I want it to have just a little bit, a little teeniest bit of dimension. So I didn't want to use any foam tape because it would be too thick. I didn't want to use, let's say, like the slightly dimensional gluey dots because that would have been kind of annoying to have to put a bunch of little dots down. So what I like to do is when I want just a little bit of dimension is use uh, scrap cardstock. And this isn't um, computer paper cardstock, this is legit <laughs> cardstock. This is 110 pound cardstock, so it's heavy and it's thick. And it will give noticeable dimension. So a lot of times when I make cards, I might stamp something and I don't like it, and instead of throwing the cardstock away, I'll keep it, and then I'll try stamping on the other side, and I might use that, but sometimes I don't like what I stamp on the other side. Still, I don't throw it away, I just uh, keep it in a separate baggie, and then when I need to give dimensional adhesive somewhere, I use that as the way to add the dimension because, I mean, I can't use the cardstock as the front of a card because it's already messed up in my eyes, but um, I can use it to give a little bit of dimension because no one can see that I messed up on that cardstock. It's just, you know, to the recipient's eyes, it doesn't even exist. <laughs> the front panel is just lifted up a little bit. Um, so that's what I love to do, just to get a little bit of extra dimension. It's really, really subtle, and most people probably don't even notice, but it makes me happy, so that's what I do. Um, for the second panel, I cut, I die cut the uh, panel using the Hero Arts Infinity, uh, Rectangle Infinity dies, and then I added the strip of uh, stamped cardstock on the bottom of that. And for both of the, or for all of the birds, I use some of those uh, like glue squishy <laughs> adhesive. Um, you could actually die cut the birds from scrap cardstock and then just adhere them uh, behind. But I decided to use the glue dots um, and I kind of doubled them over on themselves to get a little, get a little more dimension. And that's how I adhered the birds. So I topped the cards off with some black enamel dots and that finishes off the cards. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the uh, YouTube comment section. You can leave them on my blog. Supplies will be linked to my blog and listed in the YouTube description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. God bless. Bye.